Okay, so new video time. Um, this time I'm going to talk about um, the TH sound, f as in think. Um, this is a voiceless fricative, it means you don't engage your vocal cords. If you engage your vocal cords, it's the, as in the then. Uh, and it is a fricative, and that means it is produced by narrowing the flow of air a lot in the house, so there's friction that makes the sound. And in this case, it is a uh, produced by putting the tip of your tongue against your teeth at the front. Uh, and that's where the friction comes from. Um, lingua dental fricative. So, lingua, tongue, dental, teeth. So, this sound is actually overall a fairly unusual sound to have in your language. Uh, English has it, so we are all, we all think it's normal, but like if you think about people from say Germany or France, even as close as that, trying to learn English, it's a sound they struggle with. It's a hard one to pronounce. It's one of the last sounds that kids get their heads around as well when they're learning to pronounce the sounds of English. And it's one that many accents of English just went, oh, feck this, it's too hard. Um, for instance, tr London English, traditionally Cockney English, has a f, uh, just the F sound instead, I think. Um, and that's, that's all there is to it. Because it's hard, f it's easier, apparently. The other, uh, what you find in Irish English, Hiberno English, there's, they say it's pronounced three ways in Ireland overall. Um, the one that is, um, made fun of most frequently is a turkey tree and a turd where the th is pronounced replaced with a t sound that stop of the t sound where you just block the sound completely with the tip of your tongue against excuse me with the tip of your tongue against the um, ridge of the roof of your mouth um, or d in this that these and those uh, if it's the voiced version um, and there are some accents in Ireland where that is how you'd say it. Um, I remember someone asking me in junior or senior infants, Aoife, how do you spell tink? And it's a T-H-I-N-K, tink. That's just how that accent is. Um, and then the other way it's pronounced is the correct, the same as in standard English, sound. That's not all that common in for, for English speakers in Ireland, to be honest with you. Um, it's not, it doesn't never happen, some people do. Um, a lot of people have that trained into them, us, let me say. I definitely had it trained into me as a child. I remember specifically being taught in that same class by teachers and also at home by my mother to pronounce that sound because it wasn't naturally in my pronunciation inventory. It wasn't one I used. I was specifically taught you put your tongue, in fact, we were all told to put our tongue but out between our teeth to teach us to say it in, 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 in school. Um, but I would say that most of us don't pronounce it that way now, um, unless we're very carefully speaking and pronouncing things and paying attention to how we speak. Um, then the other way is the way I normally pronounce it, uh, which is uh, like uh, kind of a cross between the two. And it can be heard as either, because we don't really know about it as a, sec a separate sound unless we've paid a lot of attention to try to learn it. And this is a, a stop sound where the sound is blocked completely. But instead of the blade of your tongue, that tip front part, top part of your tongue being against the ridge at the front of your mouth, the alveolar ridge, the tip of your tongue is pushed against your teeth. <laughs> like you're going to say th, but it doesn't have that partial blockage, it has a total blockage. And instead of think, you say think. It sounds softer than the t of T, but it you can't sustain it like you can. Th it's th um, and that's how a lot of people in Ireland pronounce that. And with the voiced version for this, that, these, and those, um, I certainly pronounce most of my voiced th sounds that way. Uh, even in like in most speech, I think I do a kind of a mixed grab bag of uh, that and the full on th th for the voiceless ones. To be honest with you, I do both, I mix and match them, but a lot of the time I think if I was to measure them and count them, I would do the th and the more often than any other. Um, 
and that's what a lot of people in Ireland do. A lot of people in Ireland will swear blind that they always pronounce their THs correctly because they're not saying tink and dat and 33. Uh, but they're also not saying think and that and 33. They're in fact saying think and that and 33. If you're not Irish, you can, you will probably find yourself interpreting that third set in various ways. It may not quite sound right to you, but it still isn't 33 and a third. And I'd like to add as well that there are some other English dialects apart from Hiberno English that uh, struggle with that sound. Um, one that comes to mind is African American vernacular English. Uh, you will see often a TH written if you're reading uh, tweets or online communications as a D, and that is a lot of the time uh, representing that kind of um, similar to the Hiberno English pronunciation. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's also a tendency to pronounce the uh, voices th as f in certain locations i don't have all the details on when and how and on which words and positions that's likely to happen but definitely that th sound is really tricky to pronounce and uh, african-american vernacular english for sure has some workarounds for it as well